That's just one other reason why the crab is one of the ocean's most majestic creatures. Well, that's all the time we have today on Time for Crab. Join us next week when we'll be looking at more footage of crabs. But until next time, if you've got time to gab, you've got time for crab. Time for Crab is brought to you by the generous support of the Foundation for Carcinization Edutainment and viewers like you. Tonight on CFUT, we're putting relationships on the line for your amusement with Friend or Pretend. Get your pens and pencils ready to draw along with Art Instructions, Art Instruction. Hank Bastard is back on the hunt in a chilling episode of Undetermined Sightings, and we hear several opinions about municipal development on Local Mix. But first, grab your rakes, it's time for Gardening with Greg. We need trees, we need trees, we need trees, Greg, no matter how much you hate doing this every year, you can't just cut down... Oh, hi! Guess we're back. Thanks for the heads up, Kale. Welcome back to Gardening with Greg. I'm just taking care of the annual leaf problem. It's kind of endless this time of year, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. You know, I, I once tied a lawnmower to a vacuum cleaner and, uh, yeah, it got righteously clogged with dog leavings. Fertilized the hell out of the lawn, though, up until it caught fire. Anyway, you know how some trees just have apples? A good way to tell if a tree makes apples is if there are apples on the ground. Yeah, like my Nana always said, the apple falls from the tree. She was an idiot. Look, uh, a rake's not going to help you much with these apples. Which is fine because, frankly, you want to just leave them on the ground until they're ready. Once the birds can't fly anymore, but uh, they're still alive, that's important. That's when you know they've banked up all their happy juice and it's time to get funky. Like I've always said, ground fermented apples are nature's accelerator pedal to your court date. So let's just fu- You're invited to the grand opening of Dulcimer Warehouse's brand new Marlowe Avenue location. Celebrate with up to 70% off new instruments and 40% off every pre-owned dulcimer, zither, and cordophone we have in stock. Load up on strings, pegs, hammers, nut oil, and more with our door crasher specials and keep your kids busy with the antics of Tiddles the Clown. Plus, every purchase enters you into a draw for the new AX Ultra Goose, the instrument Tetracord magazine called a terrifying development in the field of electric zither. Shop in two convenient locations or online at www.dulcimerwarehouse.blogspot.com. Dulcimer Warehouse, where you get dulcimer more bang for your buck. Hello, I'm Bruce Waffle, and welcome to Friend or Pretend, the show where we pit pairs of partners head to head to head to head to head to head and find out if they really are the good friends they think they are. Let's meet our trio of teams today. First up, Hephaestus Newman and Rocco, the Love Doctors. We've got this in the bag. We spent a career of helping people get along. Yeah, fully licensed. I don't know that that's accurate. Team number two, Jerry and Susan from Fitspot. I'm Jerry. I'm Susan. And team number three, Bacon Rothersworth and... Lindix 1-7 with extended RAM bank. Look beside me. This is the future of all partner-based quiz games. Ecstatic response. Thank you, Waffle Sir. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you here, too. Now, do I call you Lindex 117 with extended RAM bank? Ha, 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 no. You can just call me Lindex. All my friends do. Well, just bacon. All my friends. We've been studying the algorithm of the entire game show. We have watched 500 episodes. Well, give or take. Everyone was agony. Well, that sounds like a terrific amount of preparation. We wanted to be sure that people saw that our relationship was more than just physical. 
But to be clear, our relationship is extremely physical. Rawr. It's a pleasure to have all six of you with us here today. Before the show, we asked members of each team to secretly write down answers to questions, and now we're going to see if their friends give the same answer. So, question number one to you, Rocco. What is Hephaestus' favorite place to go out for dinner? Oh yeah, he, he always loves going to Pinky's Gentleman Club and Steak Rail. Okay, let's see. Hephaestus' answer. Dolph's Deli on 3rd. We... We get sandwiches there every day. You order the Cleveland Reamer. Yeah, but the question was dinner, which clearly means supper and not lunch. We're splitting hairs. <sighs> we'll pick it up in the next one. Well, I'm afraid no points there, but love a good Reamer. Jerry, what did Susan say? Oh, that's an easy one. Favorite place to have dinner is Mom and Pop Pompadopolis Greek Shop right around the corner from our studio. All right, Susan, what did you write down? Mom and Pop, Papadopoulos is Greek shop. I've been there myself. Love their tzatziki. Bacon. Most local restaurants have forbidden our custom. So I will say the food court, specifically the table, within 25 feet of the outlet where the custodian lets Bacon plug in my extension cord. That's quite a specific answer. Let's see what Bacon said. Look at my card. That is correct. Right by the radio shack. Terrific. Well, points for you two. Now, question number two. If your friend could be any internal organ, which one would they be? Rocco. Clearly, given the profession we're in, he's going to pick the gonads. Makes sense to me, I suppose. Hephaestus, what's your answer? You love touching skin. You're right, I do. Yeah, you like skin, but it's skin's, again, like, internal. The, the skin on the inside is alive. The stuff on the outside, that's the dead stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. You make a good point. Oh, uh, what a shame. No love for gonads. Jerry, what does Susan say? Wow, that's a tough one. There are so many great internal organs. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm going to have to say, the core. Yeah! Well, congratulations, you've both misunderstood the question in the same way. Judges, we're going to give it to you. Yeah! All right, then, team number three, Lindex, what organ do you think Bacon would most like to be? Mm, there are 78 organs in the human body, so the odds are not on my side. I will guess and say the descending colon. All right, that's a guess for descending colon. Bacon, what did you say? Well, Waffle, despite the fact that we've watched many episodes together, Lindex got it wrong. I chose modem. Oh, oh no. You chose a machine organ, and I went with a soft flesh one. What a humorous misunderstanding. <laughs> humorous? I did not give you the ability to pun. Bones are not organs. That was not a pun. All right, well, now it's time for round two, where the points have been trebled, thereby making round one utterly irrelevant. And we've switched which friend is writing their answers down in advance. First question, what is something your friend used to like and now doesn't like as much? Hephaestus, what do you think Rocco's answer is? Well, I was going to say the Cleveland Reamer, but now I'm beginning to rethink strip clubs. All right, so I think we're going with Pinky's Gentleman's Club and Steak Rail. Rocco, what do you say? Why didn't you say the deli? It's your card. You handed it to me. <sighs> Next question. Well, no points there. Over to you, Susan. Ooh. Well, we don't talk about this much, but uh, it's the 110-meter hurdles. All right, let's see Jerry's answer. Yeah, that's right. The 110-meter hurdles. Can never get a handle on that extra 10 meters. It's okay, Jerry. We have fit spot now. Yep, fit spot and muscle touch. I could do 120 meters of muscle touching. <laughs> I watch it every day. Watch those elbows. Oh, <laughs> maybe you could watch a little closer there. <laughs> Lindex, what did Bacon write down? Well, I've been operating on Lindex for a long time, but she had some old capacitors that were getting pretty leaky. I think she's glad to see those go. Leaky capacitors? All right, let's see what Lindex had to say. 
Please lift my card, Bacon. I said, memory register 0B01000103 X21. They know what they did. That was my second guess. Well, no points there, I'm afraid, and Judge Gary has already started drinking, so it's time for the final question of the show. Who among you does your friend think would win in a fight to the death? Hephaestus. Well, we've been through this one before, Waffle, and uh, the answer's me. Oh, please, call me sir. Well, let's see what Rocco said. I also said me! And that's a match! We both said me, right? That, me that means yes, we matched! Yes, yes. Uh, let, let me just let me just check with the judges. Well, they don't look happy about it, but they're gonna give you the points. Yeah! <laughs> Need a win. Never seen never seen Judge Gary look so annoyed before. Uh, Susan, who would win in a fight to the death? That's tough. I mean, Jerry has a lot of stamina, but my body's a deadly weapon. I'm gonna have to go with me. Let's see what Jerry said. No argument here. She knows Krav Maga. Three championships. I don't even know what that is. Is that like muscle touching? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, we try to add a lot of warnings to our program just in case, but accidents do still happen. <laughs> okay, super. Next, Lindex, who did Bacon say would win in a fight to the death? Well, Waffle, I have never been in a fight before in my entire life. And I am programmed not to harm humans. That being said, I've operated on Lindex before without protective covering, and she's delivered a harmful shock. Please, Bacon. There might be children watching. Tee hee. That being said, I believe we both know the answer to this question. Lift my card. Susan. Susan. She knows Krav Maga. Undeniably, Susan is a force of nature. However, she is not a member of your team, so Gary has left. I guess that means no points. Oh well, thanks anyways for giving us the opportunity to show our special connection. Fifteen pin. Well, happy to have you, and happy to have all of you, but totaling up the final scores, we see the winners of today's game are Jerry and Susan from FitSpot. Yeah! yeah. No, don't, 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 don't stand up, you're out of shot. Oh. <clears throat> Congratulations! Yay. You've won today's grand prize, a shopping spree at Dave's Retail and Realtail Store, a place their spokesman assures me exists. Yeah! yeah! That's where I buy all my tails! So thanks to all three of our teams, and thank you for watching Friend or Pretend. I'm Bruce Hoff, we'll see you next time. Second and third place contestants receive a free consultation session with Evan the Crowbar Brown. That utter hack! I'm not going anywhere near him. Are you about to engage in legal proceedings? Need a lawyer, but aren't a lawyer and been told you can't be one? Well, I do. We all know there's a lot of fancy lawyers on TV, and I'm no different. I'm Evan the Crowbar Brown, and I specialize in complicated legal cases such as... How was that? Divorce proceedings, fire protection, class action lawsuits, triple jeopardy, food poisoning, the Kansas City Shuffle, two jeopardies at the same time, mall evictions, jeopardy, airing weeknights on NBC, torts, Torts, torts. Apple crime, unexpected Donnybrook, terrine vandalism, vehicular hand swatter, and crime. I'm Evan the Crowbar Brown, and I'm here to crow bar you out of your legal troubles. Call Evan the Crowbar Brown Law Offices today. We're in the yellow pages under Evan, the Crowbar Brown Law Offices. It's autumn, which means once again the streets are stocked with taste sensations ready for sampling. It's time! for terrines on the street.
No terrines here. Terrines, come out and play. A rich, unctuous consomme. Perfect for the cold autumn weather. Next terrine. What's this? It appears to be a piping hot gazpacho made cool by the crisp autumn weather. Refreshing! Next arene! Beef bone broth. Rich urban flavor accentuated by the crisp autumn weather. And while autumn may continue indefinitely, I remain Franklin Turk. Take your terrines off the street. Attention ticket holders for the upcoming Love Doctors Live Speaking Tour at the Moose Preserve. Management regrets to inform you that the remaining tour dates have been cancelled. Anyone with a valid ticket is entitled to a full refund or you can have your ticket transferred to one of these newly announced upcoming shows. Listen and be rejuvenated as the lessons of our forebears are funneled through the wisdom of the only man brave enough to try. It's former love doctor Hephaestus Newman in his new one-man show, Hephaestus New Man, a healing adventure or... Rocco the Love Daco will be taking on all challenges in four-round bouts at the Pine Center Mall parking lot. Seating is limited depending on how busy the Zellas is that night, so get there early. Exchange your tickets all next week at the Moose Lodge. Piffs is having a sale. It's time for Piffs semi-annual emergency liquidation sale. Save up to half or less on famous brand names at open air warehouse prices. Piffs is Piffs. No frills, no gimmicks, no heat. Our low commission sales staff are paid by the ton and we pass the savings on to you. Choosing to buy anywhere else is like choosing to buy anywhere else. Piffs is Piffs. Hello and welcome to Guisario's Astro News, your one-stop news source for everything happening in space. This week, without any major launches or deorbits, I thought it might be fun to talk about the spectacular engineering requirements imposed on these, our fragile little silicon friends. You see, unlike our nurturing, caring, plain vanilla, life-sustaining home here on Earth, the airless void of space is almost incomprehensibly daring. In order to imagine how durable satellites must be, you must first imagine yourself suspended high above the Earth, traveling at thrilling and terrifying orbital velocities. With nothing between you and the unending void of space, you then realize that the only thing preserving our existence on Earth is the pitifully weak force of gravity, slathering our little globe in a thin film of atmosphere. Food for thought. Next, you must imagine yourself being subjected to hard vacuum. This would be like every inch of your body being sucked on until it was bruised and tender, all while being choked. And without a single filthy human hand laid upon you. Because there is no atmosphere, there is nothing to carry heat away from your body. 
and there is nothing to protect you from the harsh gaze of our sun burning pink hot in the void. Eventually, you will freeze, but not before being blistered by the harsh radiation, as if our sun itself was dribbling hot wax all over your body. Yet our brave little satellites take it all and more. Any one of us would surrender instantly, needing hours of tender aftercare. That's all for Quasario's Astro News. Goodbye! Hi, everyone! It's time for Art Instructions, Private Art Instruction, featuring me, Arthur Instruction. You can call me Private Art. Today we're going to be doing some free drawing, like we talked about last time. As you can see, I've set up my easel, and we've covered it in paper, and I've got my magic marker. You're going to need one of those, too. Last time I asked you to call in and leave your ideas on the station's answering machine. We're going to play those back during the show, and I'm going to incorporate your ideas into our drawing. Are you ready? Grab your markers. Let's go! Hi, Art. My name is Caleb, and my favorite animal is an elephant. That's great, Caleb. Let's start by drawing an elephant. Got those four big legs. It's a good looking trunk too. Hello, Private Art. My name is Tiffany, age six, and I'd like to see a picture set in Fairyland. Fairyland. All right, Tiffany, we can do that. I think we can work the elephant into Fairyland quite easily. Private Arthur Instruction. This is Ethan. I am seven years old and I like space. Please draw some space. Okay, Ethan. I'll add some space. I think you call this science fantasy. What kind of space helmet would an elephant wear? This reminds me of when I used to do illustrations for Robert Heinlein. Hi, Arthur. I want to ask for something for my dad, and my dad loves World War II, so please draw something from World War II. Okay. Yeah, I... Okay. Okay. Space and fairyland and elephants. Yeah, and an elephant. World War II. Hmm, okay, okay. There. Can you tell what it is? Hello, Private Art. My name is Stuart. Could you please draw a binturong, also known as the Asian bear cat? Gee, Stuart, you certainly sound grown up, don't you? I'll try to draw you a binturong in some of the available space. This is Steve Wilcox. Um, Art owes me 40 bucks. Oh, and make him draw me a cow. Are we not screening me? Sure, Steve. I'll draw you a cow. I already paid you that $40, but you don't remember because you were high on quaaludes. My quaaludes. In fact, I don't know why I paid you back at all. Hello, Mr. Private Art. My name is Emily A. Twerk, and can you please draw love? Wow, Emily. Uh, it's a pretty tall order. Uh, love, you say, well, hmm. We have the elephant, and we have the bear cat, and we have World War II, so... I'm sure I can make that fit. 
I mean, there are four loves, right? C.S. Lewis tells us there's four loves. I mean, like, we... <sighs> Agape, maybe? We can maybe work that in? Sure, okay. Thanks, Rhonda. Milk, eggs, crumbitulous cereal. Is that what I heard? It didn't come through very clear. Milk, eggs. God, what was the last thing? Well, okay, let's start with milk. We all, everyone loves milk. Milk is good. Everyone loves milk. You should drink milk every day. Unless you have porridge digestion when you drink milk. Then don't drink milk every day. Or eat cheese. I had a problem with that once. I had a calcium deposit in my bladder. They had to use a catheter to get it out. And a balloon. Uh, box of cereal. Hey, is anybody, any of my producers catch what the last thing was? Is it ham? Ham, okay, ham. Uh, uh, the Binturong is eating the ham? I guess, sure, okay. To whom it may concern at CFUT, I am leaving this message to express in no uncertain terms my dismay and outrage at the content you are putting on the air. I, as I'm sure many people did, tuned in to Late Night Super f*** with Quint and Lulu, expecting to see what I know everyone else was expecting to see, and instead we got... Well, I'm not going to repeat what we got. It's your station, and you should know. I can't believe they didn't get them out. In any case, I will be reporting my sheer disappointment to the CRTC, and please make Art draw a tortoise wearing a hat. Thank you. Why was that on the program? Tortoise, sure. There's room here. Tortoise. With... He didn't say what kind of hat, so we're getting a hat like this. Good hat, good, good hat. Strong hat. I feel like we could have just cropped that message to just the piece at the end, right, audio text? We aren't broadcasting past the watershed, are we? And... Yeah, yeah. I, I'm saying I, I think this looks pretty good. I, th you know what? And always, always sign your work. All right, that's all the time we have for today with free drawing here on Art Instructions, Private Art Instruction, featuring me, Arthur Instruction. You can call me Private Art. Next time we'll be trying out some perspective and shading. So. Be sure to call into the station and leave messages about things you'd want me to shade. Take care! Returning next week to CFUT, The Quizard is back for another school year of his homework help show, Ask Mr. Quizard. I got the homework packet from Oakmont Elementary's Grade 4 class here, and some people are having trouble with Question 5 finding the hypotenuse of a triangle where one side is four centimeters and the other is six. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, 7.21. The Quizard brings his years of tutoring experience to our station as he helps kids through school. All right, got a social studies quiz coming up at the end of the week. I have the teacher's booklet here, so get your pens and pencils ready. Uh, a, B, B, C, B, D, true, true, C, and the circled field is the fallow field. Tune your kids into the show parents have called Saving Me the Trouble, and of which teachers have said, how is this allowed? All right, grade 11s, we got provincials coming up. Uh, I'll tell you right now, page one is D, B, B, C, and A. If you want the other four pages and some example essay responses, what you're gonna do is send a $10 check or money order, care of Quizzard, to CFUT, with a self-addressed stamped envelope by next Tuesday, all right? Okay, cool. Class dismissed. Weekdays at 4 p.m., 6 p.m. Central. Hello, I'm Hank Bastard. Have you ever had a feeling you couldn't explain? What do pickles taste like? Can you hear the words that I'm saying? You ever sat down real hard and got startled? Have you ever gone to sleep and lost time? I'm moving next week.
Have you ever seen a really weird bird? Can you lift this? These are all important questions, but today, the question is the Pine Crescent Shrieker. Ah, uh, the question is... The question is, what is the Pine Crescent Shrieker? Residents of this tiny municipality near the mall are rocked from their beds, almost like clockwork, every Saturday night by the guttural howls of an unearthly terror. Or is it? Nobody knows, and those who live here are racked with terror. I heard some howling from the woods. Heck of a thing. I talked to a local man. You must be deeply unsettled. Do you worry for your friends and family? My wife knows Krav Maga. Curious, do the screams keep you up at night? I have a white noise machine. A what? An oscillating fan. It gets cold in the winter. Chilling. Don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of this. Who are you again? To try and locate this horrifying cryptid, I'm here now with local psychic and entrepreneur Sequoia Barrowgrass, who is going to lend her expertise towards tracking down the Pine Crescent Shrieker. Thank you, Mr. Bastard. You've come to the right place. But I called you here. Typically, when we hear screams emanating from beyond the veil of spirits, it's a sign that the area may be polluted with dark energies. The woods around here are home to many pixies and fey folk, so perhaps a disturbance in our realm is echoing back to theirs, and now we're hearing that echo reflected back, twice removed, like a cousin. Chilling. Oh, if you're cold, I brought an extra scarf in my tote bag. I'll be right back. After meeting with Sequoia, it was obvious that the only way we'd be able to solve the mystery of the Pine Crescent Shrieker was to try and get a first-person account. So we went into the woods. Oh, spirits, please guide us. Are you in pain? <laughs> oh, no. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad does it hurt? <laughs> It sounds like it's coming from over there. Let's go. Oh no, Mr. Bastard, you have to wait. It would be very dangerous to run into woods that are infested with dark energies or pixie cousins. Mother Gaia, please protect us. No smudge today. I'm all out, but I'll give you two on Tuesday. Namaste. Will that work? Let's go. Come on, Bastard, we've got a shrieker to catch. <laughs> Greg, watch uh, out! The Pine Crescent Shrieker is in its clearing! Who the hell is... Ah, God! Didn't you hear the otherworldly wailing? It sounded like a sad moose. Like, really depressed. Yeah, like a middle-aged moose, maybe with a few extra pounds around the middle and an unfulfilling day job. Hang on. Ah, that's a camera, right? Yeah. Are you filming this for your show? God damn it, Hank, you gullible heap. I'm not a cryptid. I'm doing primal scream therapy. You told me to do it. No, I didn't. Not you, her. <gasps> Greg, you're right. I did tell you to come to these exact woods every second Saturday and cast your anguish into the void. But why? You gotta let the screamies out. Anywho, would you two mind pissing off? My daughter's moving in with her boyfriend next month. Oh, Greg, I'm so sorry. I'll compound you some stronger tinctures. Oh, good. More witch piss from the piss witch. But what do you think? Has the mystery of the Pine Crescent Shrieker been solved? Will these woods continue to roar with the unworldly shrieks? Or has this been an undetermined sighting? Seventy years ago, on the eve of the United Kingdom's entry into the First World War, Lord Grey said, The lamps are going out all over Europe, and we will not see them lit again in our lifetime. 
To mark this solemn anniversary, we are offering withering savings on all our European lamps here at Gordo's Lamp Emporium with the sale to end all sales. And it's lit, lit, lit. This weekend only, our prices are taking 30, 40, even 50% casualties. These prices are some of the most brutal the world has ever seen. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dulce et decorum est, to pay full price on lamps. Hello, welcome to Local Mix with Deborah Thibodeau. I'm Deborah Thibodeau. Today we have a very special program, or instead of talking to cool local people who have done cool local things, we are talking to people who have opinions. As many of our viewers may know, the local mall, Pine Center Mall, is slated for demolition to be replaced with the new mall, the Pine Center Millennium Plaza. And as many people are aware, there are opinions. We have put together a crack panel of people who might have opinions about this, who will be sharing their thoughts with us. First up, we have Charles Funtworth, mall ecologist. Hi, Deborah. Thank you for inviting me on your show. Thank you for coming. And we also have Brian Hellman, who is the director of Diamond Edge Holdings. That's right, Deborah. And if I can just get into it in a hurry, I don't know what everyone has such a big problem with. We need new malls in this city, and those old malls just... They gotta go. They gotta go. They're just falling apart. As you can see, it's already a crackerjack panel we've got here because rounding it out, we have George Tremblay, who is an enthusiast for Pine Center Mall. Thanks for having me on here. You know, I think it's really important as somebody who spent their entire life in the mall that I, uh, me, Jorts, I speak for the average Jorts out there who just wants the mall to stay the way it is. Fascinating. All right. Brian, could you lead us a little bit through what Diamond Edge Holdings is planning to do with the new Pine Center Millennium Plaza? Yeah, you bet, Deborah. Like, here's here's the thing, everybody, is we've we've been looking at that space that the Pine Center Mall's been sitting in. It's 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 old. It's crumbly. It's you know it's it's not very exciting. It's not a lot of verve, right? And 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 I've been looking at uh, different development options all around town. It really just comes down to you know what, Pine Center Mall needs needs an upgrade, and even more than that. It needs to be knocked down and upgraded from, from the beginning. That's what Pine Center Mall needs, and Pine Center Millennium Plaza is going to bring to you the finest shopping experiences, dining experiences, dating experiences, and overnight hotel experiences you could have in this town. Mm. I know that many of the retailers in Pine Center Mall have been struggling because they were across the street from the more popular mall. Do you think this will turn their fortunes around? Well, Deborah, it's nothing to be concerned about, like, Oakmont Shopping Center, also uh, owned by Diamond Edge Holdings, is doing very well, and they are very well placed in the market to be part of the shopping experience. But it's uh, but they are more general shopping experience. We're looking at, at making Pine Center Millennium Plaza a boutique shopping experience for the people who really deserve you know, a good mall. You know, this guy is talking all about what oak whatever is bringing, but Pine has already done everything that it needs to for the general community. We don't need to be better than they are because we already are better. People will, just like you said, go in and from cradle to grave find everything that they need. <laughs> So this is the kind of problem I have to put up with all the time, though. Jorts, I've run into you like a dozen times at, at every meeting we've had with the city to try to, to, try to get this happening. Because I don't you keep why having the meetings the at the mall. Why are you standing in the way of progress? Because it's on the way to the Panda Express. Charles Fentworth, you're also on this panel and look like you'd like to say something. Thank you very much, Deborah. As Jorts points out here, Pine Center Mall fulfills an important function in the life cycle of the suburban teenager. It is their spawning ground, their meeting place. It is where they go to socialize, and eventually it is where they go to die before reproducing. Now, if we were to disrupt that life cycle, it would have an unfortunate and unpredictable effect on youth culture. Mm, so you're saying we need a crummy mall that's infested with rats because that's where teenagers like to hang out. Exactly. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. P Pine Center Mall is not infested with rats, okay? We've we've sent people through there dozens of times trying to find any 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 
rats in the mall. Any trace of rats. We, there's nothing to be found in that mall. We found we found a few bugs. We found we found a couple anthills, you know. But I've never, no one has ever brought me any evidence of rats. And even if they had, I would have told them to get the hell out of my office and bury that shit so nobody can see it. Oh, now hold on, Mr. Hellman. I know these uh, the tensions are running high about Pine Center Mall, but I'm going to have to ask that you watch your language. Now, George, you are also getting quite upset, and I understand why. Can you tell us some of your fond memories of Pine Center Mall before it got so shitty? Thank you, Deborah. You know, as somebody who was born in Pine Center Mall, I gotta say, I'm somebody who knows innately what is supposed to be going on there. I grew up, I went to school, and I learned how to get my driver's license at the arcade with Cruising USA. If you tear down those memories, if you tear down the things that I love, well, as my grandpa Orange Julius used to say, Jorts, give me three bucks. Oh, amazing. I thought you were named after Jorts Warehouse, but, well, we learn things every day here on this program. Uh, Charles Funtworth, you haven't had a chance to talk. Thank you, Deborah. See, I just find the renewal process of the Pine Center Mall to be fascinating in its own merits. It doesn't need to be torn down in its entirety in order to act as a, a, a microcosm of the greater economic biodiversity of the region. You see, when a shop closes down as part of its natural life cycle, then pioneer species move into the space. And that's where you see your, oh, I don't know, your Halloween shops, your calendar shops, your electoral offices, and they develop naturally into things like your dollar stores or your foot lockers. And eventually the stability produced by those species provides the habitat for your long-term old growth stores, like your Sears, your Eaton's, Zeller's, mm. A and B Sound. The stores that will never go out of business. Exactly. Mm, I see. Now, Brian, you look annoyed. I'm losing my mind, Deborah. Oh, I'm so sorry, Brian. This is a very touchy subject. Tell us more about what Diamond Edge Holdings is bringing to the table. We're gonna tile the floors. Like, you walk in, you walk into Pine Center Mall right now and it's all industrial carpet, right? And you, you walk into the bathrooms and it's linoleum, you know? And, and half the toilets, they sourced from they sourced from a home center that's like three blocks away. We upgraded at least and put the carpet just outside of the bathroom. There used to be carpet in there. Who's we? You don't even work at the mall. You just live there. You, you've lived there your whole life. I don't even know that's legal. Is, is he allowed to live at this mall? Well, certainly no one stopped him so far. If you take away this mall, I'll have nothing. I'll have you know that I was given free $5 footlongs for life. Is that really the only reason why you're still living at the mall, Jorts? $5 footlongs for life? Well, I... It's not not the reason. <sighs> How about a free... Two, two free meals at the Zeller's Restaurant in Millennium Plaza every day and you can sleep in the banquettes. What about the photo booth? One turn every week. You can bring your own props. I'll throw in a bedding set from Dania down. You can just pick any banquette you want in the Zellers. Just don't tell anybody. <gasps> Hold up. The new mall's gonna have a Dania down. That's a local mixed scoop with me, Deborah Thibodeau. Please continue your negotiations. I don't know what a banquette is. It's like a big booth, coated, like covered in vinyl. We'll get you the big one that has the, like, the round table so you can kind of spread out a bit. Do we have those in the food court? Yeah, but this one's going to be like on its own. And, and because the Zealous is open until 9 o'clock, you can come and go as you want. Normally you have to like, you have to come back to the mall by 6 p.m., right? Holy moly, viewers. Well, while George Tremblay is making a major life decision live on the set of Local Mix with Deborah Thibodeau, how about me? Deborah Thibodeau has a little tete-a-tete with Charles Funtworth, who hasn't really been able to get a word in edgewise. Now, Charles, do you think the new mall will support, perhaps, uh, more popular stores like a Blockbuster Video? Well, Deborah, a Blockbuster Video is certainly something that can be supported in, in a mall, but its function within the greater mall ecosystem is mm, perhaps debatable. You see, 
a rental property rather than a direct purchase property such as an HMV video um, allows uh, customers to compare purchases in the food court mm, and mm. perhaps debate things. Whereas when a customer enters a blockbuster, they return home immediately in order to begin their 24 hour rental period. But wouldn't we see more people coming back every day if they had to return their blockbuster rentals? And maybe that would lead to more foot traffic to what is arguably Pine Center Mall's worst part, which is its awful dire food court. That is certainly an interesting proposition, Deborah. I would think that, yes, it is certainly a possibility that the presence of a blockbuster mall in the Pine Center Millennium Plaza would improve the diversity of its food court. Aw, oh, thank you, Charles. That was fascinating. But viewers, what do you think? Would you rather see a Quiznos or a Mr. Blimpy? Why not write in? But now, back to Jorts and his major life decision. Jorts, how's it going? Deborah, I've lived in my entire life inside this mall. Mm, so you keep telling us. I had my first kiss here my, at the prom. The prom wasn't at the mall, but I still went to it. Yeah, but if you just agree to move into the new mall and get out of this one, Every year I'll give you a thousand dollar gift card to Danny Leather. You can buy yourself some new leather jorts and a fedora. Oh, Jorts needs to think about this. Wait, Jorts, you're tracking gold box necklace. Yeah, if you uh, if you want to find me, Jorts, you know I'm I'm in administration between the Stokes Kitchen and the Shoppers Drug Mart doing recreational drugs after eight. He'll crack. Well, that was fascinating. So when we come back, viewers, if they're made of leather, can they be Jorts and mushrooms? Can you eat ones that you find around town? Junior mycologists tell us hell no. This has been Local Mix with Deborah Thibodeau. I'm Deborah Thibodeau. Wouldn't they be lords? Coming up later tonight on CFUT, Jules brings the beat and his dancers bring the heat on Julius Haddock's Breakdance Roundup. Learn about your body as the microship Odyssey continues its sci-fantastic journey through the orifice. As voted by viewers, it's everyone's favorite episode of Boat. What's going to top Franklin's charts this week on Frank's Ranks? Get the latest bovine breakdown with today's Beef Report. And Alan Brunt catches folks unaware at high velocity on hidden camera highlight. All this and more.